Well, thank you, Ken. I really appreciate your your comments there and your your concise and strategic perspective on smart manufacturing from a from a Johnson and Johnson perspective, but also in terms of your role on the board. I think you embody the the best of the the membership ideal, which is that you um, you're here to benefit your organization and to to draw value from Sesame for your organization, but you're also investing in the organization and contributing to the organization. So, so I just uh, appreciate um, all of that from, from uh, our perspective here at Sesame. So I know we, we got a late start, but we thought we'd take a few moments here at the end of the session today to answer some of the questions that have come through. Uh, there's definitely more than we have time for, but uh, given the clock here at 427 Eastern, we thought we'd take roughly eight minutes to bring us to 435 before we officially close out day one here. And again, thank you for your patience with the technical difficulties that we've experienced. Kind of remarkable actually. And, and um, I'm just amazed and, and pleased that most of you, that we have such a large audience still with us here today. So let me, let me first ask a question from Richard Donovan. He, he spoke out asking, in addition to the decades long research pointing to the impacts of deliberately unsustainable business practices, i.e. agribusiness, we have on global, will have on global climate, we now have recent studies that show human made mass now exceeds all living biomass. What are large SESME companies like General Mills, Emerson, et cetera, and sponsors like the DOE doing to implement circular economic principles to smartly, in brackets, data enabled and sustainable, reduce the amount of stuff that we make? So that's a big question. And, and I think given the, the few moments that we will take to answer it here, uh, we won't do justice to that. But I will say this, I think this, this becomes the topic of an important set of conversations that we need to have as, at SESME. We've, we've begun that. I, I was invited by one of our new members, GE, to be part of a circular uh, economies manufacturing roundtable uh, where, where we had a, an extensive conversation about this. If you read the World Economic and World, World Manufacturing Council's report that was just released a couple of months ago, um, that was the core topic, one of the core topics of the World Manufacturing Council report. And, uh, and I had the privilege of being interviewed for that. And so sharing a bit of Sesame's perspective there. Um, very, very directly though, I think, I think the core focus, as I stated at the be beginning of my keynote, um, we believe that smart manufacturing is directly tied to the grand challenges of our day, which include decarbonization and sustainable manufacturing in general, and of course, the impact in, in terms of climate change. And I think the Haresh commented on a similar, in a similar way to the reality that the outcome of smart manufacturing is inevitably articulated in terms of operational efficiency, supply chain optimization, asset utilization, all of the great things that manufacturers are looking to accomplish. The parallel conversation that we have to get much better at having is the direct impact on how these smart manufacturing initiatives reduce waste and can be articulated in terms of reduced carbon footprint, in terms of improved productivity or, or energy productivity, and of course the, the, the biomass improvements, the net biomass improvements as a result. So, so like I said, look for more conversations with our membership and with the marketplace on this topic, on this very important topic. Um, and in closing, at least on this specific question, perhaps uh, Ken, I can ask you for your thoughts on on how Johnson & Johnson might see this. Sure, thanks, John. I think one of the big drivers that we're seeing from our customers is they want products made for them specifically. So what we're seeing is smart manufacturing can enable that customization of products. So instead of being, you know, putting out products and then pushing them out into the market, we can get more customer pull. And I think you'll see that And in the next decade, you're going to see a lot more 
custom because I think people are getting a lot more conscious of there being so much stuff out in the environment. So I do think that many companies will start strategies that will customize products for people who need it when they need it and how they need it. And I think that smart manufacturing will absolutely enable that. Great. Uh, appreciate that, Ken. I'll t turn to Harish uh, and ask you a question from the audience here saying, as a smaller manufacturer, how can SESME help me? How do I become part of the SESME ecosystem? Well, I th th thank you, uh, John. I think that's a, it's a great, great point and a very timely one because if you if you look at our agenda, you will actually see a a demonstration in a couple of days next week, actually, where we'll show you how easy it is for a small manufacturer to leverage the power of some of the technologies that we've been talking about. You know how easy it is to take uh, a small device, you know, and have data uh, shipped to the smart manufacturing innovation platform visualize it, do the analytics, and make improvements on your process. And these are not large investments. This is all you know, low-cost uh, type of solutions. And use SESME as an ecosystem to go after uh, some of your questions that you might have, either on technology or training. You know, we have, we have an ecosystem that is full of experts. Come join us, leverage their expertise, leverage their experiences, learn from them, and then take those small steps as there are, uh, as uh, they're going to be outlined in this in this demonstration. So again, don't be afraid to take that first step, uh, and it, it, it's not it's not that difficult, uh, is what I would say. Thanks, Harash. Let me just uh, share my thoughts as well. One of the one of the exciting new announcements that you'll hear from us is going to be around a new set of smart manufacturing innovation centers, and these. These represent a unique opportunity for all of our members of, of all types to engage with the broader ecosystem around the, this topic. And I'm thrilled to say that we have one of these smart manufacturing innovation centers based in the Midwest is focused solely on small and medium manufacturers. And so what this will do is uh, enable us to engage with, with the MEP program across the country in establishing and building and creating a lighthouse for the art of the possible, the art of the possible for small medium manufacturing, um, specifically around various small, smart manufacturing use cases. So I'm I'm thrilled about that, and I think in the coming days we're gonna we're gonna see a vast set of smart manufacturing use cases directly focused on small medium manufacturers that together with the education workforce development activities that Harash, you pointed out, will be a huge acceleration opportunity and really allow us to demonstrate for the first time what democratization really looks like for smart manufacturing. So, so great stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a question here about uh, what are some of the specific, and I'll point this at you, Harash, and perhaps uh, chime in as well. What are the, some of the specific concrete ways that SESME can work with machine builders and software developers to add value to their products and for their customers through the integration with the SESME Smart Manufacturing Innovation Platform? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I think, you know, if you look at some of the work that we are doing through our projects and through our ecosystem, you will find that we are trying to develop content for our marketplace in, in two different ways, right? One is understanding the process, understanding the machines, and then developing these information models, which are SM profiles, you know? So as you're doing that as a machine builder or as a software provider, you have now the ability to come and kind of help us do, do that right the first time, right? So engage with, in that process of building these components that reside in the marketplace. And then following that, come back with applications that you and your your ecosystem, your clients, your customers are um, uh, already engaged in, right? So then through that interaction, you are now building more of the content that resides in the marketplace, which helps you as a machine builder, but it also helps others build applications for that process and for that machine. Outstanding. Time is short, but I will add one more component here, which is that next Tuesday on, on day three of this event, 
you're going to hear from, among others, the VDMA, which is uh, an organization out of Europe um, representing the largest collection of machine builders, I think, in the, in, in the world. And you'll hear from them specifically how they're engaging with machine builders around the world to develop information models as a standards based in a standards based way which of course will enable our profiles and our marketplace um, to to build information model standards for every imaginable equipment class and i think that's something that the machine builder community here in the u.s will benefit from significantly and and also represents an enormous opportunity for u.s based machine builders to become involved in that very um, strategic endeavor. So I said 435, uh, we have quite a number of questions that are going to remain unaddressed here, but we will follow up directly with the audience in terms of those uh, responses. And with that, uh, I want to thank everyone for a phenomenal day, uh, day one of our Smart Manufacturing Summit 2021. We've had a few technical difficulties. You've been patient. Hopefully you found the content compelling and helpful and there's much more to come. So day two is officially gonna to start tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern, eight Pacific. So we'll see you on the other side. Thank you.